Hey everybody, welcome back to Summit for the sixth Sunday of Easter. My name is Mark. Let's jump right into the readings. How do you know that you know the Holy Spirit? How do you know that you really like know God's Holy Spirit? That's kind of a tricky question, right? Because as Catholics, we like to look at the Trinity and we sort of dissect the Trinity into three persons, and rightly so, three persons, one God. But we put those three persons sort of like in their own little box, right? God the Father, he's up in heaven. You know, Jesus, we literally put him in a box. We call it the tabernacle. Well, you, you go right there, Jesus. The Holy Spirit, the box looks kind of like a cage for the dove, right? I don't really understand how the Holy Spirit works, and the Holy Spirit kind of freaks me out. I can't control the Holy Spirit, so what are we going to do? Here's the thing. You can't compartmentalize the Trinity. If you want to get to know God the Father, you go through God the Son. You want to get to know God the Son, Holy Spirit's the way to do that, right? This is how we come to know Jesus. And the Holy Spirit, it even says in Scripture, we can't even proclaim Jesus as Lord unless it's by the Holy Spirit. But what's hard is understanding someone so inexplicable. That makes sense? It's hard to put words to someone as powerful, as profound as the Holy Spirit. Because without the Holy Spirit, we have no church, we have no scripture, we have no anything. So really, we can't even begin to imagine what life would be like without the Holy Spirit. However, the readings this week give us a little bit of insight into the role of the Holy Spirit and the importance of the Holy Spirit. In this first reading, Philip, who's a deacon, goes into Samaria. And he's preaching, and people are so on fire with his preaching, that, and, and, and the Holy Spirit working through Philip, they say, we want to be baptized. We want to be baptized. We're, we're open. This is the best thing ever. They're all paying attention. This is amazing, right? People are being healed. People are ready. And then all of a sudden, they say, okay, the, the apostles back in Jerusalem, right, says Peter and John, they hear about this. Hey, the people in Samaria are ready. They head to Samaria. And even though they've already been baptized, Peter and John do something amazing here. They lay hands on them. Why? So that the Holy Spirit would come upon them in a new way, in a different way. See, in baptism, the Holy Spirit comes to us in an invisible way. But with the laying on of hands, like we see in the sacrament of confirmation in the Catholic Church, the Holy Spirit comes in a visible outward way. And this is a really important distinction. This is actually one of the scriptures that our church has used for centuries to explain how baptism and confirmation, both sacraments of initiation, work together, right? How they're two separate sacraments, but they work in tandem. And this is where we get this from the Acts of the Apostles, this important story. Because you can receive the Holy Spirit, but whether or not you unleash the Holy Spirit to unleash the fullness of all your spiritual gifts is something different. And we see this in the second reading, right? As St. Peter, Peter is saying, be prepared when people come to you, asking you the reason for your hope. Be prepared. Now, why is he saying that? He's inferring and he's, and he's basically saying that you and I, if we're really living in the Spirit, are living in such a bold way that people are so blown away that they're actually coming to you and saying, hey, um, what's going on? How are you so virtuous, hopeful, holy? How are you so joyful in the face of this? How are you so strong in the face of that? What are you on, basically? This is St. Peter saying, people are going to be coming to you. Why? Because they see the Spirit in you. And they see the Spirit working through you and flowing through you. And this is why in the Gospels, Jesus is saying, listen, God's going to send the Advocate, send the Spirit. This is going to be great. You're going to know you love me if you keep my commandments. You see, for Jesus, holiness, following the Spirit, living the Christian life, is not just about words. And it's not just about intentions. No, 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 no. He makes it very clear. It's about actions. It's easy to say you love God on a Sunday, but it's harder to show it on a Friday night. It's easy to proclaim you need God on a Monday, but are you living like that on a Saturday? You see, for Jesus, anybody can say it. And anybody can desire it. Good intentions are awesome. The road to hell is paved with good intentions. What Jesus is actually saying, though, is if you love me, if you're following my spirit, you're going to keep my commandments. Basically, if you're following my spirit, it's going to be visible in the things that you do. Visible, like the Holy Spirit coming upon a confirmation. Not invisible, but visible. These are really important lessons. And it's a good thing we're talking about them during Easter season. And you'll see as each week as we get closer to Pentecost, we're hearing more and more about the Holy Spirit and about the effects that the Holy Spirit has on our lives still today. So pay attention. 
How do you know that you know the Holy Spirit? It should be evidence. It should be visibly seen through our works and actions every day.